Hello, welcome to Inside China Auto. Today we're going to have an Inside China Auto investigate. It may be the first one, it's definitely the first one, it may be the last one. But you may have seen a video online recently where some footage was shown from 2021 showing car graveyards in China. And the person who basically made the commentary on the original video that was by a Chinese blogger said that there were tens of thousands of Netta Vs that are being put out into a field, never been driven, never being sold and being a lot of waste. So on my left side here, you can see that we have some Netta Vs. On the right side down there, you can see we have some other cars. I thought, let's come and investigate ourselves and see what's really happening in these China car graveyards. So what I'm gonna do is switch the camera around, give you a little bit of commentary on what's going on here. Now, first, I want to show you the opening scene of the video that I just mentioned, the one that talks about over 10,000 Netta Vs. This opening clip was actually not from the quoted video, No Place to Place 2. It's actually much more recent and is likely the source for the photographs that were doing the rounds in the press and on Twitter recently. You can see how this view behind me here matches the view in the clip with the Netta Vs because you can see the chimney in the background and the apartment buildings. So essentially, what I found at this location is that claims in the video related to new cars are false, the claims about the abandoned ride-sharing vehicles are true, and that actually there's another story going on at this site. This site is the base of Banshan, a mountain in Hangzhou, northeastern Hangzhou, the same location that is highlighted at the very start of the, of the video in question. The narrator begins the video by stating that what we're looking at is a field of over 10,000 Netta V Chinese EV cars that are rotting away. And it's here that the first false accusation is made. In actual fact, there is nothing like 10,000 Netta, Netta Vs in this field, not even in this video. In actual fact, it's between about 150 to 200, maybe even less. It's hinted that these vehicles are registered to create false sales numbers for subsidies, which again is false. The narrator adds, all of the cars that you see in these fields, well, they're counted in these numbers, referring to the high sales of EVs in China. And that's not exactly true either, because the cars in these videos, minus the Netta Vs, which are actually about one or two years old, are actually about five to six years old, and therefore not representative of the current numbers. And even if they were new, a few thousand is not going to make a dent in the millions of Chinese EVs that are being sold annually. But of course, these cars are not new. Exploring this collection of Netta Vs, it's clear that these are well-used cars, often with aftermarket seat covers or floor mats, leftover bottles and cigarette packets inside them. So why are they here? Well, the answer, at least in part, can be seen on the back of some of the cars that feature stickers from car sharing companies or Uber model taxi companies, companies that have almost certainly gone bust, leaving these vehicles in limbo, either as assets to be fought over in a bankruptcy settlement or simply disregarded. So what are all the other vehicles that you see in the background of the shot, the ones that are claimed to be Netta Vs that actually aren't? And also in the video borrowed from that two-year-old documentary, the green and white ones and the panda cars and things like that. In this field, at Banshan, the vast majority are BAIC or BJEV, BJEV EC3s. This car was launched in 2017 and is, as suggested, predominantly a ride-sharing car. Ride-sharing is essentially like car-to-go, where you find a car with an app, unlock the car with the said app, and then drive away, and then park it wherever you want to, or at designated parking places. Now, here at least, we do get some truth from the narrator, who goes on to explain that following the e-bike sharing craze that took over in China in 2016-17, a craze for a similar model with cars also sprang up. And this is true. I was in Beijing at the time. These companies did start. However, Unlike the bikes, the cars suffered a fairly premature fate, and for a number of reasons. Firstly, is that almost any other method of transport is faster in big cities in China than cars. Bike or subway will generally win at busy periods. They'll also win on price, as will taxis. In addition, the wide range of different parking operators across a major city, plus limited and not universally controlled street parking, means that using these cars is massively inconvenient, as there is no set agreement to park where you like without a fee. Unlike with something like Car2Go in a city like Stuttgart, where this agreement makes for a far slicker system. Now, add in the incredibly asset-heavy model of renting out cars that nobody looks after, because nobody looks after a rented thing more than they something they own, and they also need better spots, moving to better spots when they've been left somewhere, you get a recipe for disaster. Cars are neither as cheap nor as easily repairable or as disposable as bikes. But these companies were started anyway, and inevitably they failed in China, as did Car2Go in Chongqing for the reasons stated before, and also in the UK. 
Chances are, almost every single one of the operators went belly up, leaving thousands of these BJEV EC3s and the various other incredibly cheap micro EVs in the rest of the video left without a job and needing a place to die. In fact, I only know of one company that still exists and has a lot of old battered Quaros cars, and that's based in Xi'an. Now, fields like this is where those cars go, priced at around 50,000 RMB, or about five and a half thousand pounds from new, and boasting a range of about 180 kilometers, later improved. These cars have been superseded by significantly better models because China's EV market has undergone an incredible revolution since 2016. In essence, these cars are the unwanted remnants of the EV development rise, left undesired and far behind in the talent stakes. Is it a crime, as suggested in the video? Not really, it's certainly not pleasant, does feel incredibly wasteful, and the hope would be that somebody finds a way to recycle or repurpose these cars and the batteries somehow. Certainly, if you have use for a 20.3 kilowatt hour battery, later became a 30 kilowatt hour battery, you may be able to do something with them. Are they polluting the environment with all these chemicals and batteries and the rest of it, as the narrator states? Not really, no more than any other used car is. What chemicals there are are not leaking anywhere, they're not giving off emissions, but certainly it's not an ideal situation, I think we can agree on that. But what of the rest of this particular field? What is happening here? Because there's a load more cars in this field that are not Neta Vs or those bike models. Well, are they more falsely registered new cars or wasteful old ones? Well, no, not quite, but you may be surprised. Across the rest of the field, are a mix of some former taxi sedans from BAIC, Geely and Hyundai, plus a few Dongfeng Peugeots, and then a bunch of cars that have been involved in horrific crashes. But at the bottom end, well, that's where you'll find hundreds of unregistered new electric cars awaiting delivery or even purchase. So you're telling me the video is right? No. Are they Chinese brands? No. The vast majority here are Volkswagens, Audis, and yes, Toyota's doomed BZ4X, a car that not even the Chinese want, because sales of EVs from those brands are very low in China, they're undesirable, and here they are, clogging up this field amongst a smattering of new cars from local brands, a couple of Chang'ans and a couple of other things as well. It turns out that all you see online isn't necessarily true after all, so take what you see in here with a pinch of salt, and ideally ask people who actually live in the country that they're talking about, they're probably going to know more. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Be sure to check out our other videos for interesting insights into China's new cars, motor shows, and industry experts, plus much more to come. And if you do, thank you very much for subscribing. We will catch you next time.